Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and welcome to my channel where I discuss all things related to financial services, their products, the compensation plans, IMOs, IMO comparisons, and the standard is I supply third-party documentation to back up my opinions and my rhetoric, all right? And then you can decide what's best for you. This week, I'm so excited. I can't tell you how much preparation I've done for this video. We've got a lot planned for 2019. And as you can tell, this series really isn't about someone searching to learn how to sell mortgage station at final expense, but I believe it really is. Uh, because we can provide you with all the tools, the great leads, the great training, the great support, the greatest technology, the great administration, all these things, uh, back office, you know, they're important and they should be considered. But until you fix this right here, the six inches between your ears, I believe all of those things don't matter. You've got to bring desire and you've got to grow yourself through personal development to be prepared for the setbacks of this industry. And there are setbacks. There are setbacks with any business that you start. And here you are in business for yourself. So I thought I would dedicate the next seven to 10 weeks really going through a course that was shared with me several years ago that really impacted my life and allowed me to put my sails, so to speak, into the direction of the wind and fix this so that when I got prepared for whatever business I was entering into, I was better prepared mentally to grow through things rather than go through things and to set myself up for success and not failure. So welcome to those who have decided to join me on this. If you came here looking for something on how to sell a mortgage section or a final expense on this video, it won't be here. But I believe you'll get great value out of it and also make sure you get the handouts. This is a course. There is handouts. There is homework. And I believe at the end of this 7 to 10 week course, you will be better prepared mentally to really explode your financial future into 2019. Whether or not you're in mortgage session or a final expense, this applies to being independent and to seek work-life balance and to be free. So this week I launched what I believe is critical, as I said, for long-term success in mortgage session or final expense or any other business. So before I begin, make sure you've got the handouts, the description or the link that you need to click on, enter your name and email address. I'm not asking for your phone number or your address. I'm not going to contact you and try to recruit you to a different organization. This is free and these handouts are so you can maximize the course over the next seven to 10 weeks. So we left off the launch video that you should have already watched. If not, go back and watch it by saying, are you willing to choose the unknown? And that's where we're going to start today. I want to start by sharing a story by Paul J. Meyer called The Black Door. And by the way, Paul J. Meyer was an insurance salesman, a self-made billionaire. He's passed away a few years ago. I had the opportunity to be at his home a couple of times throughout my career. And it was a great privilege to learn from somebody that had such great success in the insurance industry and was also a personal development mastermind. The general had a very bizarre custom for dealing with a captured spy. He would give the spy the choice of facing the expected death by firing squad or they could choose a second unknown option and pass through. Moments before the scheduled execution, the spy would be brought before the general for a short final interview. The general would demand an answer from the spy. What do you choose, the firing squad or the black door? The spy would hesitate as he thought through the possible outcomes of taking the mysterious black door. He felt uneasy, uncomfortable, terrified of what could await him by choosing the unknown. That was a very difficult decision, but after much thought, he told the general that he would face the firing squad. Shortly after his decision, the horrific sounds of shots rang out, declaring that his death sentence had been carried out. The general, shaking his head, turned to his aide and declared that men will always take the known versus the unknown. He shared how the spy was given a choice, yet because of his fear of the unknown, he chose certain death. Now, the aide asked the general what lies behind the black door. Freedom, answered the general, and I've only known a few brave enough to take it. That is a story to which we begin the next seven to 10 weeks. Are you afraid of the unknown? The story illustrates the situation many of us face each day, a choice between the known and the unknown. 
Very few people have the courage to come alive, step out of the crowd, and live the life they are designed to live with faith, courage, passion, and purpose. Becoming dulled and aimless by their fear to act on their passions, they settle to live far below their God-given talent. This fear chokes their dreams and keeps them in a prison of their own making. The good news is there is a way out. It will take sacrifice. It will take commitment, focus, and faith for you to develop new habits. It will stretch you. It will test you. It will mold you into a person of character and purpose. This is not about trying it. It's not about sticking your toe in it and see what happens. It is either you will or you will not. There is no in-between. I'm sure you heard before the definition of insanity is keep doing the things you've always done, yet expecting different results. I want to ask you right now, are you willing and ready to take the step, that leap of faith, believe the best in yourself, and choose to step into the unknown? If that's you, and if it's so, begin by opening that black door. I want to share with you my sales coaching creed and something that I use with my own agents that take on this challenge. And here it is. Number one, I will always be honest with you in our communication. I believe the truth will set you free. It may or may not be what you want to hear, but it will grow you. Number two, I will never ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself. That's called leading from the front, and it's something that I'm passionate about, which is why I don't like recruiters that have never sold a policy, never put their name on an application in this business, recruiting you, telling you what you should do that they're not willing to do themselves. I'm not your boss. I'm willing to be your coach. I work the same system for the same reason I ask you to do it, because it works. Number three, I will always believe in you. I'll never give up on you when you're down. And when you're doing well, I'm always going to ask you to do just a little bit better. Here's what I'm counting on you over the next seven to 10 weeks. Number one, be honest. Be honest with me and be honest with yourself. I can't help you if you're not honest with me and yourself. Talk to me anytime about anything that concerns you. I will not be mad or disappointed in you as long as you're honest. We all make mistakes. Number two, be coachable. Our system is the best way to succeed. Follow it to a T, no matter what. If you don't understand our systems or you don't feel you want to use them, I'll then explain to you in a better way so you can understand why they will help you succeed so you understand why I'm asking you to do them. Number three, be committed, right? Be committed to the schedule to meet your goals. It is your lifeline to success. It takes 21 days to form a habit. You are responsible for your success. Quitters never win and winners never quit. Finish what you start. At the beginning, as you're developing competency, you're awkward in front of other people. That's tough. I get it. I understand, right? I've been there myself. When you're committed to daily coaching, you will get better. It gets fun. And I promise you, while it won't be easy, it will be worth it. And lastly, very, very, very important. Remember your why and remember what it is that you're fighting for every single day that you get up. Now, to complete our first week, let's talk about the value of written goals. In case some of you question its impact on your level of success, success principle number one this week is plan your work and work your plan. The Harvard Business School goal study that they conduct proves goals do matter. In the book, What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School, Mark shares a study conducted at Harvard on students in the 1979 MBA program. The study asked the students, have you set clear written goals for your future and made plans to accomplish them? That study showed only 3% of the students surveyed had written goals. 13% had unwritten goals, and a staggering 84% had no goals at all. Ten years later, they interviewed the same group of students and discovered the following. The 13% that had clear goals earned two times as much as the 84%
with no goals. 3% with clear written goals earned 10 times as much as the other 97% put together. So what have we learned from the Harvard Business School goals study? Well, if goals are major to whether or not a person becomes a top income earner or not, why wouldn't everyone have clear, concise, and written goals? In the best-selling book, Goals, by Brian Tracy, which I love, he shares four reasons why people don't set goals. Number one, they don't think goals are important. If your sphere of influence does not commit you to goal setting, there's a good chance that you won't commit to goals either. Number two, and what we're going to teach you in this course is, they don't know how to set goals. Most goals are so general, they are simply just wishes that never get realized. Smart goals, on the other hand, are specific. They're measurable, they're achievable, they're realistic, and they're timely. More on this as we progress down this path. Number three, they fear failure. The majority of people unconsciously sabotage their success by not setting goals in fear they might fail. Yet failure is a part of every success story. The key is to fail forward towards success, right? Number four, they fear rejection. The fear paralyzes people into a life of average. They are afraid to set a goal in fear of criticism if they don't accomplish it. If this is a problem for you, the section in this course on how to overcome rejection will help you. I recommend you watch and re-watch the video over and over again to gain more confidence. Also, in the description, grab the book I recommend, How to Have Confidence and Power in Dealing with People. The link, again, is in the description. Make a habit of daily goal setting for the rest of your life. Focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. Resolve to be a goal-seeking, intentional person determined to move passionately toward the things that you want out of your life. Now, what do you want? Now it's time for you to do some homework and to participate and engage. Please don't skip this step. To do so lessens the chance that you're really going to get something out of this rather than have it go in one ear, out the other, and never change your life. Take the time, go to a quiet place. Hopefully, as I said, you've clicked the link in the description, you've given me your name and your email address so I can send you the weekly handouts because we're gonna have them on a regular basis. So assuming you've done that, if not, click the link and do it now. Pause the video, do it now. So you and I can go through these things together. So let's go through them together and move to a quiet place so that you can complete them. The first one says dreams on it, so pull that one out. And it says, building your dream, what do you want? If you had all the time and money you needed, what would you want? Your present daily habits have created what you have today. As you go through this training, write in the habits column the habits that will change what you have into what you want. So go down each focus area, your home, your career, your income, your vacations, your free time, and complete those things. Your reality, what you have, habits, what you must do, habits that you must do, in order to change and get what you want out of life. Your dream, what you want. So on the next page, you have a section called Creating Smart Goals. The first one is specific. We talked about this earlier. What do you want to accomplish specifically? Why do you want to accomplish it? Who will be part of making this happen? Where will I accomplish this goal? Be specific. A specific goal is more likely to be accomplished than a general goal. Next, measurable. How much? How many? How will I know when I meet that goal? Measuring your progress will help you focus and keep you on track to reach that goal by a target date. The measurement will show you the progress you are making towards the successful completion of your goal. Creating a daily habit to reach this measurable goal inspires you to keep you moving forward. A measurable goal will answer the following. How much? How many? How will I know when I meet my goal? The next one is attainable. Identify a specific goal that can be measured. Then make sure you are willing to accomplish it. Think of the possibilities, yet be aware of your own personal limitations. If you're not blessed with a singing voice, your goal shouldn't be to score a record deal. 
Goals that seem impossible but not achievable should not stop you. An attainable goal pushes you outside of your current comfort zone and grows you towards your ultimate potential. An attainable goal will answer the following. Can I do this? How can this goal be accomplished? Have others done it? And this is a big one. Will meeting the goal challenge me without defeating me? The next one is relevant. To be relevant, a goal must be something that matters to you. It must line up with your vision, your principles, and your passion. A relevant goal will answer the following. Is this goal achievable? Is this the right time for me? What is the reason, purpose, or benefit of accomplishing this goal? Am I passionate about accomplishing it? Okay, last page, timely. A goal needs a finish line, a moment of celebration, a target date for completion. A commitment to this deadline helps you eliminate distractions and focus your efforts to complete the goal on or before the due date. This is where many people get hung up. Without a time frame, there is no sense of urgency to take action on a consistent basis. Putting a state of completion on a goal sets into motion the unconscious mind to work out the details and make it happen. A timely goal will answer the following. When is the established completion date and does the time frame create a practical sense of urgency for me to accomplish it successfully? What do I need to do monthly, daily, even hourly to accomplish this goal by the target date? Again, persistency and consistency is the goal here. Now it's time to set goals. To successfully launch, or if you're not satisfied with your present level of production, you can relaunch your business. Apply the SMART goals process to three short-term goals. These goals will help move you towards the greater goal you want to accomplish. And I encourage you to really take this next step. Don't leave anything out. Take advantage of the whole course. It's free. Change your mindset, change your life, and this is your opportunity. Goal number one, set a goal for your first week. Specific, measurable, attainable, and relevant, and timely. Goal number two, set a goal for your first 30 days. And number three, set a goal for your first 90 days. Fill out those sheets, move to a corner in your house or outside, take a walk in the park, and complete those homework assignments. The next video, we're gonna talk about schedule, presentations, and attitude. We're gonna talk about the success principle number two, which is understand what you control. See you in the next video, and don't forget to subscribe. Mash the bell button if you haven't already done so, so when these videos come out, you're gonna get instant notifications. Like this video if you got something from it, and always, I enjoy all of your comments, your texts, your phone calls, and your emails. Feel free to post any comments below, and don't forget to get the handouts and follow along each week. And as I close every video out, the surest way not to fail is to be determined to succeed. Because if you do that, you can't quit on your dream. Bye-bye now, and I'll see you next Friday with success principle number two. Bye.